First, check that you meet the prerequisites for Active Directory network deployment of Windows image files. You should have Active Directory set up in a Windows 7 workstation joined to the domain that you can dedicate as a DTK image server. We're going to take a look at the Windows 7 uh, deployment toolkit, okay, um, or what Microsoft re refers to as the MDT 2010, um, you know, the Microsoft deployment toolkit. And um, along with this, we're also going to need the AIK. We, we've talked about that in previous videos, um, the automated installation kit. So with both of those installed, um, what you can do is you can take a, a Windows 7 image, either that you've created or you can pull the default image off the Windows 7 DVD if you want. You can host it on a server that's running the MDT, the, you know, the deployment toolkit, and it will sit there and it'll listen, and it creates a directory share with those image files. And then you can use the tool to create a bootable ISO. And it's just a small, you know, burn onto a CD, um, or if you have PXC compliant new cards, you, you can also do it, you know, right off the network. And you can boot off that, and then it sort of a, gives you a little mini version of the Windows kernel, um, you know, light version, sort of like the PE build, pre-boot environment. And it'll let you get an IP from a DHCP server, and it'll let you go out and find um, the deployment toolkit server, all right? And then you can install that operating system from across the network. So it's kind of a cool tool because um, you, know, you can keep images and things on a file server, the deployment server, and you can you know, deploy or install multiple images in different places on the network. Um, so that's, that's what the tool is, what it does, what it's for. Now, um, I'm trying to keep this video brief and short, so I'm breaking it up into pieces. And understand that before you start this, the prerequisite is that you need to have Active Directory set up and configured. And I've done that in lots of different videos, but specifically I, I did it um, for this project in the previous video, it, it was just called Active Directory Setup and Configuration, a brief tutorial. So you'll wanna look for that video and watch that if you haven't already set up Active Directory, understand that Active Directory is a prerequisite for implementing uh, a deployment server. So this is a Windows 7 workstation that I'm going to install the toolkits on, and it is part of and joined to an Active Directory domain called Autobots. And so that's the prereq, and having that done, we're ready to install the AIK and install the deployment toolkit and get started. Two, install the AIK on a dedicated Windows 7 workstation. First, let's install the um, automated installation kit. Remember that you can download that freely from Microsoft, and that's what I did, but it's it's pretty big, and I'm trying to keep the video brief, so I'm not gonna, I've already downloaded it, but it's about 1.7 gig, close to two gig. So go and download that for free from Microsoft's website to your hard drive, and it will be in the form of an ISO. And you can either burn it to a DVD and install it that way, or if you have tools like, you know, you know Daemon Tools or Power ISO, you can use those tools and simply extract the ISO to your hard drive and install it from your hard drive. Either way, that's what you'll want to do. So I've got it, um, you know, already downloaded it, already set it up, and I'm going to go ahead and install it. And so you'll want to go to the folder where it is, and let me change my folder and search options once again so you can see file extensions. I like to see my file extensions and hidden files and whatnot, and I don't like to share. All right, I just modify all that while we're at it. Okay. And so now you can see what we want to click on is the binary executable start CD EXE. And that's in the AIK Automated Installation Toolkit. And I'm going to go ahead and do the Windows AIK setup to install the files. And that'll just give us a lot of the command line tools that we need as well as the SIM. All right, remember the System Image Manager or SIM that lets you you know, create deployment shares and answer files and stored images and things like that. And I'm going to go with the defaults and agree and next and next and everyone that's fine and just, you know, try to keep it brief.
Okay, and we're done with AIK. Three, install the deployment toolkit on your dedicated Windows 7 workstation. Next, let's install the deployment toolkit. And again, I've already downloaded it to save time, but just Google for you know the deployment toolkit, or you can go to the Microsoft website and just type in like Microsoft Deployment Toolkit 2010 um, MSI or whatever, and you, you'll you'll find links to both the 64 and 32-bit versions. I've already downloaded the 32-bit version, which is the operating system environment for this Windows 7 workstation, part of the uh, Autobots domain. And I'm going to go ahead and install it, and I downloaded it to a folder called Images. And I also copied it um, from Frankenstein, I copied over the Windows image file we created on Aphrodite. You remember back in the tutorials and the sessions we did on using ImageX and SysPrep and, and making system images? So that's there as well. And I'm going to go ahead and install it. This one's a lot smaller than the AIK. It might take you a while to download the AIK. Like I said, it's close to 2 gig um, <coughs> in ISO format, but this is just like, you know, a little bit over 16 meg. So it's a much quicker download. I guess it depends on what your bandwidth is. And finish. And we're all done. And to save me some hard drive space, you know, now that it's installed, I don't need the installer anymore, so I'm going to delete that. You can always download it again for free from Microsoft if we need it. 4. Create a deployment share. Now that we meet all the prerequisites and we have the AIK and the deployment toolkit installed, I'm going to click on the start menu and all programs. And there's the Windows AIK, but what we will want need is the workbench, the deployment workbench here from the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit. So I'm going to go ahead and open that. And the very first thing we need to do is create a deployment share because there won't be any. This being the you know the first time we run things. Um, and you notice if I click on here, not, you know nothing shows up. Little hourglasses. But all right, so we want to create a new deployment share. So I'm going to right click on deployment shares and say new deployment share. And this will launch the wizard, the configuration wizard. And I'm going to go with the default path. All right, that's typical deployment share. And what it'll do, it'll add a little dollar sign like this. You don't see it here, but it'll do that. Remember, when you do that in Windows, it makes a hidden share. Such that I've, if I typed in the host name, UNC, like backslash backslash bumblebee, um, it wouldn't show up among all the shares. You know, typically, like, you know, users, I guess, would be like the default on a Windows machine, but it wouldn't show up. No, but if I typed in backslash backslash bumblebee backslash deployment share dollar sign or string symbol, then it would show up as a hidden share. So, um, you know, it, notice it didn't add that by default, so don't change anything. Just go with the defaults in this example. But just be aware that when it's all said and done and it creates that directory for us, it will do that. It'll add the little dollar symbol, which makes it a hidden share, and that maybe kind of improves security a little bit, I guess. So I'm going to click on Next, go with the default, and notice the share name. So deployment share, there's a little dollar symbol there. And see, here's the UNC path. All right, so the network path, backslash, backslash, bumblebee, backslash, deployment share. That would be the only way to get to that share from across the network. You'd have to actually know the name. And when we get done with all this, we'll create an ISO and burn it to a CD, and, and you know it will have the information be able to connect it. So next, deployment share description and MDT deployment share. I'm going to call this Autobots. Autobots. I'm going to set a symbol, transform. Avengers Assemble. I'm I'm getting I'm losing. Avengers Assemble Autobot. Why not Avengers Transform and Trans oh, oh, anyway, alright, let's get on with this. Okay. So ask if an image should be captured. We'll leave that checked or selected. Ask user to set the local administrator password. Let's check this option here to query for the administrator password. We're not gonna ask for a product key in this example for you know we could use an answer file for further custom customization or a uniqueness database file with the little UDB extension. Um, notice the summary of our details here. So um, it's going to be called the Autobots Deployment Share and Deployment Share, we went with the default settings there mostly, so next. Might take a few minutes and then we shall click on Finish. Notice it gives us a summary of what it's doing. Looks like everything went okay, the process completed successfully, so we're good there. We could choose to view the script if we wanted, but I'm going to click Finish, try to be brief. All right, and notice that our share now appears here. I'll stretch that out. So here's the Autobots deployment share. 
and if I open this little node, these nodes are you know triangles, these are called nodes. If I click on that and open that, notice I'll drag this out here, notice it also appears here. And then in that deployment here, we would have different options that we would be able to select. So they appear here in the middle pane, and again, if I click on the node, little triangle, notice that they would appear here, and we could do different things with them. Five, add the operating systems and Windows image files you wish to deploy in the deployment share. Okay, so what I want to do is, you know, just like I did, expand the deployment shares folder. So click the nodes over here. And what you want to do is implement or set up or configure an operating system. So I'm going to select the operating system uh, folder. And when I do that, um, I want to right click it and select import operating system. And let me pause just a second and put my Windows 7 DVD in. We're going to do both a custom image file and the default Windows 7 image file that's in the sources folder on the DVD, but I've got to put the DVD in. So I'll be right back. And then, okay, I'm back and I just popped my Windows 7 uh, DVD in. But remember where we were, we had set up our deployment chair. And now I've come here and I've opened up deployment chairs and I'm going to go to operating systems and I want to implement. Um, in this case, we'll do the default image from the Windows 7 source, sources folder on the Windows 7 DVD. This is unlike every Windows 7 DVD. So I right click and I'm going to click on our, I want to select import operating system. And notice my options here. I could do a custom image file or a full set of source files. And um, as an example, if I have enough hard drive space, I'll do both. And I'll try to make it brief. So full set of source files, next. And the source directory, I want to browse. And I'm going to go here and select my Windows 7 uh, you know, DVD in this example. So the D drive, I'm going to click on Next. And Windows 7 x86, the 32-bit version of Windows 7. And it'll pull the uh, WIM file, or the, the install that WIM Windows image file, about 2 gigabytes from the Sources folder on the DVD automatically, or at least it should. So Summary, Next, and I'll go ahead and do this. And like I said, again, I'll do this one first to show you what it's like to... We'll have two available when we get done that we'll be able to install across the network. The first will be the default Windows 7, which is just a normal one you get off the Windows 7 DVD. And the next one we'll do is uh, Aphrodite.Wim, which we created in previous sessions and previous uh, tutorials and videos um, where we were using ImageX to create custom Windows image files and using DSIM to modify those image files and using uh, SysPrep to prep a system. So we'll, that's that image we created in those tutorials, and you may want to go watch those um, if you want to see how to use those tools or to create a custom image. So this will give you an example of both, either you, you know, whether you had done that or even if you, all you had was just the default Windows 7 DVD. Blow your nose. Get some tissue and blow your nose. Yes, yeah, so it'll be, you'll be all right. Humans are humans are hairy. We have hair. That actually helps protect you. The hair in your nose is covered with mucus and it traps germs and things that try to enter your nasal passageways. You'll be okay. Are you done crying? <laughs> what are you crying about? All right. Okay, now it's performing the import and we have finished. So we're done. And notice these are all of the different uh, you know, Windows image files that I can deploy if I need to or if I want to. So starter, home basic, home premium, professional, and ultimate. Now let me show you real quick if I were to browse that DVD. go to the sources folder and in this folder is actually those Windows image files by default so on a typical default Windows 7 installation DVD in this folder the sources folder the subdirectory this is where you'll see boot WIM and install WIM and you know this is about a between a 1.7 to maybe a little bit maybe 2 2.15 gigabyte image file 
and this is the one that you typically use all right with depl the deployment toolkit when you you know deploy Windows images okay but that's all of those image files were copied from the DVD onto the hard drive where they can be set up to work with the deployment toolkit all right so that's example one now let's deploy a custom Windows image. We'll deploy the image Aphrodite Wim that we created in videos past. So that would be an example of you know deploying the default uh, Windows 7 image file and operating system. What about a customized one? Remember in previous tutorials and videos we were using ImageX and SysPrep uh, and DISM and we created a custom image file of a host uh, computer host named Aphrodite. Okay, here's Aphrodite.win. About a six gig image there. So what about that? How could we deploy that? Well, I'm going to go ahead and click on all programs. Go to Deployment Toolkit. I'm going to open the Deployment Workbench. And in my Deployment Shares, I'm going to go ahead and <coughs> open the node here. And here's the Autobots. And again, I'll pull that out so you can see. Let me click on the little triangle here, the node. So once it's loaded, just will take taking a little bit of time here. Okay, so here's my deployment share. And now if I go click on operating systems, notice these are sort of my default choices. And if I wanted to, I could right click and say import operating system. And I could say custom image file and next. And then the source file. And I'm going to go to the C drive. And I want to go into my images subdirectory. And I'm going to select Aphrodite.wim. Notice the extension filter here is .wim. If you're into programming the Windows Application Programming Interface or API. So Aphrodite Wim, I'm going to click on Next. And uh, setup and sysprep files are not needed. Do not copy any setup files. Idea, but well, we already sysprepped it and set it up and imaged it and everything so forth. So I'm going to click on next and destination directory name Aphrodite and I'm going to click on next and just sort of a summary of what is going on, what's going to happen and next <coughs> hopefully I don't run out of hard drive space Okay, and we're all done. Process completed success successfully. And uh, I need speech therapy, and <coughs> um, so I'll click on finish. And notice, okay, here are all our default Windows 7 installations. And then here's the Aphrodite, Arr, Aphrodite, yeah. Um, our Aphrodite installation Windows image file. So all of that has been configured. And now, um, now that we've done that, um, actually, let me close this out, and I'll make this a separate step. We're just going to reopen it and we're going to create a task sequence, but I, I want to organize this in separate steps, so let me close this out and we'll do the next one. Six, now I need to create a task sequence to initiate the deployment of a particular image when selected. And now the next thing we want to do is set up a task sequence. So again, we're going to go back to the deployment, well there was a shortcut there, but Microsoft Deployment Toolkit, let's click on the Deployment Workbench and we've created our deployment share and we've added you know several different images to it they're raring to go shares created permissions configured set up active directory all that good stuff aik installed deployment toolkit installed so we're opening the workbench and 
In our deployment here, now that we've added the operating systems, we need to create a task sequence. So I'm going to go down here on the left pane under task sequences, and if you don't see it, just be aware that you need to click on these little triangles called nodes and open up the correct one. Okay, so I select task sequences, and this time I'm going to create a new task sequence since I haven't done any task sequences yet. The ID will be one since it's my very first task sequence. And for the for the task sequence name, we will put um, Autobots Transformation Deployment. Now, whatever you want to call it, but comments um, <coughs> Optimus Prime um, commands the heroic Autobots on an epic adventure as they fight the Decepticons against all odds. Uh, I guess that should be a capital D, right? Um, capital A, whatever. <coughs> I mean, you obviously don't need to really put any comments in there if you don't want to. And this could be anything you want to call it. That's why I named it Autobots Transformation Deployment. But it would, you know, you'd want to name it something logical that, you know, so that it says what it is, not too cryptic. That way someone who is going through your deployment shares and looking at your task sequences could maybe, by looking at the name, recognize what it is, what it does, what it's for. But to make this fun, we'll use that as an example. So next, <coughs> standard client task sequence, and we'll go with the default bit. Take a gander at or look at all of the different ones here. Post, operating system installation task sequence, standard server task sequence, OEM, blah, 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 blah. blah. We're going to go with the standard client task sequence, okay? So, standard client. Next. And now I can choose. I get to choose. Yay! All these different ones here. Um, we could do Aphrodite. We could do Ultimate, Professional. Um, let's go with the default here in this case, Windows 7 Ultimate. And I'm going to click on Next. And notice you can choose to specify or not specify a product key. And in this case, I'm not going to specify a product key. So I'm going to click on Next. And then the full name. And this doesn't have to be, um, you know, doesn't have to be in the image. It's not like a user account that you had to create in the image. It doesn't even have to be a name in Active Directory. Um, but, in, you know, basically it's just the username that you would like to. So I'm going to do Sam. You know, Sam. You know, the I'm trying to sound like Optimus Prime and I can't. But. Organization. Um, I don't know, using humans. Well, let's just say Autobots. Because he joined or sided with the Autobots or so forth. And the web page. HTTP and www.networkingprogramming.com because the Autobots secretly work at networkingprogramming.com. No, of course not. In my dreams, but, you know, I mean, if... If my wildest, deepest, darkest fantasies came true, then networkingprogramming.com would be simply a front for the Autobots, in in my mind and my fan anyway. You know, we can we can at least imagine that, right? <coughs> so administrator and the password used a specified local administrator password. That was the funky password because it was the same password um, that we configured for Active Directory. Remember, we changed it if you go back in the Active Directory setup. Now, you need to make sure that your local administrator account is enabled, because remember that gets disabled sometimes by default, so make sure, right-click on computer, check, make sure your local administrator account is enabled, and make sure that you're putting in the right password for this to work properly. So for me, capital P, at symbol, lowercase s, s, w, zero, r, d. And confirm, capital P, at symbol, lowercase s, s, w, zero, r, and d, okay? And I'm going to click Next. <coughs> and here's a summary of all the things that we're going to do. Whoa. I'm going to click on Next and let the wizard complete. The process completed successfully. Looks like everything went okay. So I'm going to click on Finish. And when I do, my Autobots transformation deployment will appear in the center box there. And just to further illustrate what I was talking about, um, let me just kind of pull this, shrink that down a little bit. Let me just go over here and show you what I was talking about. You want to make sure that, you know, because of what we selected in the wizard, uh, once again, I'll, I'll review. Um, not what I want, I want to select manage. You want to make sure that <coughs> the administrator, the local administrator account, 
I know we're part of Active Directory, but make sure the local administrator account is enabled. So double check, local users and groups, users, right click, properties. Make sure that account is disabled is not checked. A lot of people do that for security reasons. They disable the administrator account. That's normally a good thing, but in this case, it would be a bad thing. Okay, and you know, member of administrator's group, that should be the case. So make sure this is not checked. And make sure your password matches. If not, right click and say set password. And you would want to change the password to you know to whatever you t set up in the wizard when you're configuring the task sequence. Okay. So that being said, just maybe one caveat there. We're done with our task sequence. And we're almost ready to go. Seven. Now let's configure the task sequence we just created. Next, now that we have created the task sequence, we need to configure it. And again, you wouldn't want to open and close Deployment Workbench all these times like I'm doing, but I'm doing this in separate steps, so that's why I'm just open and closing it each time. Try to you know break it up and hopefully make it easier to index or search the video for things that you need. So again, remember the last thing we did was we created a new task sequence, so now that it's there, we can begin to configure it. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to select properties on my task sequence, and again if you don't see it, remember click the nodes and the left pane there. And I want to go to the middle tab, task sequence here, the task sequence tab, give it a chance to load all of the nodes. Okay, and what I want to go uh, select is the pre-install, so I'm going to close this node here, and I'm going to go up here, see where I've highlighted where it says pre-install, click on the little node symbol, the little plus there, triangle or plus nodes, but so pre-install is what we want. Um, and in pre-install let's select a uh, new computer so new computer only and once we select a new computer only let's select format and partition disk node so I'll highlight that that's in blue and when I do that notice that you know this property page appears here and go with the defaults we want to use MBR that's the default that's more most compatible with Windows instead of GPT the disk number zero, first disk, that's fine. Um, you could rename this if you wanted, but there's no need to. But I do want to highlight this, so click on OS Disk Primary, highlight it so it's blue like that. Click on this little middle button here to configure the properties on it. And notice some of the things you can configure here. Is it a primary or extended partition? What's the partition name? OS Disk, um, you know, I could call it Autobot data or something, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter, but you can customize things. Percentage of remaining free space that you want to configure, um, let's say I do turn on my number lock there, let's see we'll do like 70% or something. Um, use a specific size, NTFS or FAT32, of course you really want NTFS. The Autobots need things like encryption to encrypt their files from, so they can't be deciphered or read by the Decepticons. And if we use FAT32 they wouldn't be have EFS or file encryption. So we need to use NTFS, and also the Autobots need compression. So remember, encryption and compression are available to NTFS. Also, the whole permission system, the discretionary access control list, or DACL, and the access control entries that go on it only work on NTFS. You don't have that on FAT32, so the Autobots need security, group policy, active directory, so definitely you always, most often, want to go with NTFS, the new technology file system. All right, and I would click on OK, because those are the defaults there. And let's see. That's really all we need to do. I mean, you could do further customization if you wanted, but I'm going to click on OK. And so I've, I've, you know, we've created our task sequence, and now we've right-clicked, selected properties, and we have configured and set up the properties on our task sequence. And now I'm going to just close these nodes by clicking on the little tiny triangles here, and see where it says deployment share. Um, <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and open it to the Autobots deployment share. I'm going to right-click. When I right-click, notice the menu says Update Deployment Share. Well, all of those configuration changes and property settings that we modified, we need to update the deployment share. So I'm going to click on Update Deployment Share, and it'll launch the Update Deployment Share wizard. I'm going to click on Next, and Summary, I'm going to click on Next. <coughs> Just going with the defaults there. And this will actually create bootable ISO images for like 32 and 64 bit. And you know, it depends on what you're configuring in the task sequence when you update the deployment share. And then you'll be able to burn these ISOs to CD ROMs and has kind of almost like the you know the Windows to pre <coughs> boot environment. 
but this 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 is a light version of Windows, light touch pre-boot environment. You'll be able to boot right up off of it and connect to the Active Directory domain, get an IP via DHCP, and connect to the deployment server, which is this Windows 7 server here, Bumblebee, and you'll be able to install these images on empty, you know, computers with empty hard drives right across the network. So it's kind of a neat tool. It'll, you know, set all that up for us, and when it's done, all that'll be left for us to do is to simply burn it to a CD, or if you're a hardcore, you know, uh, pen drive Linux fanatic like me, I don't even use CDs and DVDs anymore. I just take all my images and I put them on. I have a you know 32 or 64 gig flash drive, and I use pen drive for everything now. Um, my goal is to completely do away with having to use DVDs and CDs. Wow, <laughs> it's it's just oh, this is a great time to plug pen drive Linux while this is going on. Man, go to pendrivelinux.com and download the multi boot configuration tool. Fill the, fill that flash drive up with all kind. I've got. 32 and 64 bit versions of Ubuntu, um, you know, Maverick, Meerkat, and I have the latest one, 1104, not Lucid Links, uh, brain fart. Anyway, um, I have, uh, you know, 32 and 64 bit versions of Windows 7, all kinds of, you know, tools to, you know, repair a machine, or I have off crack, you know, to crack passwords and things. I have all just all kinds of great tools in Pendrive. Well, uh, I have Ghost, I have Clonezilla, all of that I've configured. Well, same thing. You can take these ISOs and put them on your flash drive. Just plug your flash drive in and, and boot right off of it. And then that way, you know, if you don't have enough space on your flash drive, you could just put the bootable ISO on pen drive, boot up off of it, and then you could install the, you know, the <coughs> the majority of the, the actual image file, which is gigabytes and gigabytes, you could install from the deployment server. Okay, and the process completed successfully. And you can see that the 32-bit x86 boot image and the 64-bit um, <coughs> image are fine. We, we have ISOs, and those would be copied into the boot folder in the deployment share. So I'm going to click on Finish. And we're ready to go at this point. So we have Active Directory, Optimus Prime is over there um, you know, on our domain controller. We've got Bumblebee here. He's the deployment server. And now we're ready to boot up, uh, you know, a machine with a blank hard drive, no operating system at all. And we'd simply want to burn a CD. And let me show you where the images are. So I'm going to go click on <coughs> the C drive here. I'm getting low on space. And I'm going to go into the deployment share folder and into another subdirectory boot. And let me show you the path here. I'll click up here so you can see the path. So C colon backslash, you know, deployment share backslash boot. But it, it'll be in the boot subdirectory, where whatever you call or wherever you create your deployment share. And these are the ISOs that were created, that we burnt. So here's a light touch, you know, pre-boot environment 64-bit. And here's a 32-bit, two ISOs. And 
again I'm, I'm going to be um, we're going to create a third machine Ironside using um, you know these images and using you know we'll install the operating system from across the network using this ISO that we've created and the deployment toolkit so um, that third machine we'll call Ironhide and we're going to deploy it with or you know install it with this ISO so whatever your favorite burning software is mine's Nero but whatever Rockstar CD Creator or Windows but you just want to burn that image file to a CD it's not that big it's less than 200 meg and then that will give you a bootable image which with which you can boot up off of it connect to the deployment server and you'll be able to install Windows 7 um, on the new client you know with nothing on its hard drive and join it to the domain